Now on Sunrise and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, a hailstorm sweeping across the crossroads yesterday caused damage in several areas. And major progress is being made in cleanup efforts at the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Plus, President Biden is set to impose new tariffs on China targeting electric vehicles. And we got some more warm, bit of a stable next couple of days coming away before the next weather system comes our way, possibly bringing some severe weather. We'll take a look at that in the weather coming up. It is state championship day for the St. Joseph Lady Flyers. Relive their last out of yesterday's game coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Carolina Estrain. And I'm Park Cox. And today it's the 14th day of May 2024. The time is now 631 on our Tuesday morning and it is Online Romance Day. Online Romance Day? That's actually, I feel like that's a pretty popular day now. Yeah, I think dating apps have really become very popular. I have only used one dating website, but that was yeah. uh, 12 years ago, Parker. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> Mine was, that was like seven, eight years ago for me. It works out for some people. Yeah, it does. It is pretty popular for some. Well, Parker, how is it looking out there today for us? Well, today for us, it is going to be a lovely, nice, fair day. Although in the background, it will be a bit warm, might even say hot for some, but right now it is not hot or warm yet. And in fact, it's actually just a tad bit chilly out there. Just a tad bit. In fact, if you're looking live here in Eastern Victoria where that sun's starting to come up, that's gonna slowly start heating us up today. Actually, I wouldn't even say slowly, probably a bit quickly, but if you're gonna go look at that sunrise this morning, might want to, like I said, maybe get on a real light jacket, just a tad bit chilly out there this morning, 65 degrees. That's chilly to me. I don't know about y'all, but 63, 2.2 degrees off of that temperature. You do have a bit of a humid morning, 93% out there right now. This computer says five miles. Look at this one. This one also says five miles, but some of us do see some thicker fog out there. It looks like Gonzales has some zero mile visibility. So some of us that do see that thicker fog, please be careful out on the roads this morning. But look at your radar. We did have some of us that were seeing some drizzle and also a couple of us saw some real light showers. It looks like most of that has dissipated. Maybe a couple uh, drops still in Goliad this morning, but I think that'll dissipate here in the next 15 to 30 minutes or so. But look at your weather headlines. We do have some sunny weather coming our way today and tomorrow and some real heat coming our way this weekend. Some of us could be back in the hundreds and we have, like I said, another possible alert day coming our way on Thursday, maybe even on Friday as well. We'll have more details on that over the next few days. But like I said, today, clouds are going to decrease to sunny skies today. And I'm thinking that's going to bring us up to, I'm thinking the low 90s today, right around 91, 92 for today. But the warm weather continues even after all the rain yesterday and even before the thunderstorms on Thursday. We're going to take a look at all that and more, though, in just a few more moments. Back to Carolina. Thank you, Parker. A hailstorm sweeping across the crossroads yesterday caused damage in several areas. The storm started Monday afternoon around 2.15, some of the hail getting as large as a golf ball. As the hail crashed in the area, some neighborhoods in Victoria saw damaged property like broken windows and dented vehicles. The police department reported flooding in several streets and numerous locations where trees and limbs were blocking the roadway. There were two reports of trees on roadways in Lavaca County where the storms first hit. Soon after the storm moved to Calhoun County area, to the Calhoun County area with damage to homes and property near Magnolia Beach. Mobile homes and RVs in the area were hit hard as the storm passed. The Lavaca, the Port Lavaca wave reported about the damage in Calhoun County saying injuries are still unknown at the moment. Major progress is being made in cleanup efforts on the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. Officials say they have recovered the remains of all the missing workers who died while working on the bridge when it collapsed. The Coast Guard has opened four temporary channels around the impacted area, allowing several vessels previously stuck at the port to leave. A House delegation, including Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi, visited the site Monday and after their visit, they gave a briefing where they assured locals that the federal government will help pay to rebuild the bridge. New Jersey Senator Robert Menendez appeared in the New York courtroom Monday for the start of his trial on charges he accepted bribes in exchange for official acts. Menendez arrived in federal court in Manhattan where the jury selection will begin. Prosecutors say he received gold bars, money for home mortgage payments, compensation for a no-show job and use of a luxury car. In return, the New Jersey Democrat made positive statements about Qatar and provided sensitive government information. Menendez says 
has, not, has pled not guilty and called the charges salacious. His wife is also indicted and will face trial at a later time. Now to a big economic announcement from President Biden. He's set to impose major new tariffs on China, especially on electric cars. Is that really good for the American consumer? Biden set to impose new tariffs on Chinese goods, including a quadrupling of tariffs on electric vehicles made in China from 25 to 100 percent. The administration argues these taxes will level the playing field and protect American businesses, specifically car makers. This Chinese-made electric car called the Seagull sells for just $12,000 in China. Experts here praising its build quality. If introduced to the U.S. market, analysts say it could leave companies like Tesla and the big three automakers racing to play catch-up. With relatively modest investments, they, they most likely could, uh, and it could become a competitive threat here. Electric sales have struggled in the U.S. Tesla produced 46,000 more cars last year than they were able to sell and is now renting parking lots for unsold cars. Other U.S. automakers like Ford have scaled back production, citing slow demand. But not all industry observers are praising the tariffs. One critic writing, instead of just de facto banning the competition from giving Americans access to affordable hot new EVs, the U.S. should instead try making affordable hot new EVs itself. I think it's a clarion call to the industry. It says this is the benchmark. This, this is what we have to look at. This comes as a new poll shows Biden trailing Trump among registered voters in Michigan, home to the big three automakers. The war in Gaza also hurting Biden standing among Michigan's large Arab American population. Perry Russell, ABC News, Washington. That leads us to your viewer poll. You can scan the QR code right there on your screen to take part. We ask you, do you agree with Biden's plan to impose higher tariffs on Chinese goods? Okay, let's take a look. Wow, this is the highest it's been all morning. 90% of you say yes, you agree. And 10% of you say no, you do not. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part in our viewer poll. A fancy vivid yellow diamond described as one of the largest in the world could fetch more than $7 million when it goes under the hammer Tuesday at Auction House Sotheby's in Geneva. Mined most likely over 100 years ago in South Africa, the all nat weighs 101.29 carats and it's mounted as a Cartier brooch. It's the first time in 30 years that it will appear in an auction. The head of magnificent jewels at Sotheby's, Catherine Beckett, says the stone repolished 20 years ago lost a carat but gained a degree of color saturation. All right, the time is now 6.38 on our Tuesday morning. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. Here's a look at what's coming up on 25 News Now Sunrise. The candidates forum for the GOP State Representative District 30 runoff took place in Cuero. I'm ABC's Perry Russell in Washington. Michael Cohen on the stand and former President Trump's hush money trial. How he says it all happened. That story coming up. And also coming up after the break, we'll take a look at your school bus forecast, followed by your weather and health forecast. And later on Sunrise, we'll take another look at the possible severe weather coming yet again on Thursday.
Well, good morning, Crossroads. If you're all tuning in with us this morning, you're looking live in Cuero and look at that pretty sunrise that's coming up. And also a nice couple, just a few little clouds that are passing through. But I think that those clouds are going to decrease today. But if you're going to go out there and see that sunrise, not too bad of a sunrise right now. A little bit chilly. You might want to grab a light jacket. Right now, 65 degrees in Cuero. But with that dew point matching that temperature, you've got 100% humidity. So plenty of humid out there. And I would not be surprised if you do see some fog out this morning. But you know, actually, in fact, if you're looking real closely at the camera, you did see a couple of raindrops. See, there's a couple of raindrops right there. So there's actually a couple of, look at that radar. There's a couple, of, just a little bit of light drizzle out there this morning. But in terms of fog, some of y'all might see some of that thicker stuff. So please be careful out of the roads today. But if you're sending your kiddos out the door, it's going to be just like it is right now because they're going to go out the door here in the next half hour. About 64, 65, all of us in the 60s this morning. But as we're heading back home, we've got a warm one today getting up to about 92. And that's because the sun is going to come out and that's why your UV index is going to be high today and the grass pollen is going to be high today as well. And air quality is not going to be too bad, only at moderate. But we've got more warm weather and a possible alert day coming on Thursday. And we're going to take a look at that in just a few more moments. And that's it for weather. Now we're going to look at sports with Zach Brown. So yesterday, the St. Joseph Lady Flyers taking on Hyde Park in the state semifinal game. Check this out. The last out of the game. That ball smacked in the center field. Hyde Park tries to score. The runner gunned down at home. That was Gianna out there in center field and Jasmine applied the tag at the plate. St. Joseph won 10 to 1. They are going to the state championship game. It's going to be this morning at 1030 a.m. Hopefully we have another state champion coming to the crossroads with your 25 sports. Now I'm Zach Brown. All right. Thank you, Zach. We want to invite y'all to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today. Plus, you can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. Just search for Crossroads Today Plus. Michael Cohen is back on the stand today in former President Trump's hush money trial. On Monday, Cohen telling the jury how he silenced women who claimed to have stories of having affairs with Trump all while Trump denies all wrongdoing. Former President Trump's fixer Michael Cohen telling the jury before the 2016 election, Trump warned him, be prepared. There's going to be a lot of women coming forward. The first was Karen McDougal, a former Playboy model. Trump denies having an affair with her. Cohen testifying the National Enquirer bought her story at Trump's direction. The jury hearing the secretly recorded conversation where the two allegedly discussed the deal. When it comes time for the financing, which will be... Listen, what financing? We'll have to pay you. So. Cohen testifying he then heard Stormy Daniels was trying to sell her story. Another affair Trump denies. Cohen testifying Trump ordered him to make sure Daniels' story did not get out, saying, push it out past the election, because if I win, it has no relevance. And if I lose, I don't care. Cohen telling the jury Trump told him to pay Daniels to keep her quiet. So Cohen says he took out a loan to cover the $130,000 payment, got final approval from Trump, then wired Daniels the money. Prosecutors say Trump paid Cohen back, then falsified business records to cover it up, breaking the law. Got no evidence. And I'm innocent. Prosecutors have said they could rest their case this week, meaning Cohen could be one of the final witnesses. Perry Russell, ABC News, Washington. And its forum for the GOP State Representative District 30 runoff took place in Quero Monday evening. The District 30 runoff race between former Victoria Mayor Jeff Bockdate and former Jackson County Sheriff A.J. Lauterback is one of the closest watch races of our area. Both Bockdate and Lauterback covered a wide range of topics, including property taxes, school vouchers, and school safety, as well as power grid accountability. Still, Lauterback pushed for border security, saying it is his top priority. Across this district, there's one constant, border security. The fear for your kids, your grandkids, your families out here has been relayed to me over and over again. My plan is to stop it. Use force, deportation. I think it's the only way. We spoke with some of the voters at the forum who say they don't agree with the smear campaign. Both candidates have taken part in, but they understand things can get personal at times. The race is set for May 28th and kicks off, early voting kicks off on May 20th. And Bach Knight 
also recognized border security as a top as a top priority. President Trump gets in the office. That's going to be fantastic, but we need to safeguard ourselves for the future. We've got we've got water issues we need to deal with in our district and across the state. And if we're going to continue to grow and prosper as a state, we're going to have to tackle a bunch of water issues. Property tax reform. Continue down that way to make sure that we don't overprice and price out people out of their homes. We need to do a good public-private partnership. Election Day, again, is May 28th, and early voting starts May 20th. The time is now 6.45 on our Tuesday morning. So to come, results are in from a new analysis from Moykovi's longest clinical trial. Okay, it's time to celebrate some birthdays. We want to wish our mom a happy 79th birthday. Maria, happy birthday. Love from your husband and all your family. Aw, happy birthday, Maria. And Star Wars creator and the creator of the Force himself, George Lucas, he's turning 80 today. Happy big happy birthday to George Lucas because I am a huge Star Wars fan. And to see your birthday wish live on 25 News Now Sunrise, come to CrossroadsToday.com. Click on More and Under Home, you'll see KVU to submit your birthday. All right, the time is now 6.46 on our Tuesday morning. Parker, what's your favorite new Star Wars TV series oh, that's come out? Obviously, got to go with Clone Wars. Oh, Clone Wars. The Ahsoka show is pretty good, too. I like Ahsoka, and I even like Andor. Oh, yeah. That's a pretty good show. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday if you're celebrating one today. That's right. Happy birthday. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Well, good morning, Crossroads. I'm so glad to hear that everyone was all safe and sound after the big thunderstorms that we had yesterday. In fact, some of us saw some hail, and I actually got a nice little picture of some of the hail that we saw here. This is right down the road here in central Victoria. Got a couple inch and an inch and a quarter hailstones. This is an inch hail right here. This one as well. This one's about an inch and a quarter. And this was taken right there at my house. And I really thank you all for all the pictures you all sent in. I can't include all your pictures, obviously. So I just went ahead and threw mine in there as well. But definitely next time there is severe weather, please definitely send those pictures our way. It helps us report them. But looking at the storms that we saw yesterday, it was right around 2.30 to 3 p.m. right when uh, right when I took that uh, picture. It was about 2.28 p.m. actually. But right here you can see a big line of all that big old cluster of some, uh, some of those thunderstorms had some hail in it finally exiting us right around 5 p.m. The good news is nothing big or crazy came your way, but right now also good news is we're going to be nice and stable here for the next couple days with some nice sunny skies today. All of that until Thursday and Friday, we have another upper level low coming our way that's going to stall later this week, possibly bringing some severe weather. But we're going to take a look at all that more, though, in just a few more moments. Back to Carolina. Thank you, Parker. The results are in from a new ana analysis of Wegovy's longest clinical trial. It shows the drug can have heart benefits beyond those associated with weight loss. A Yale cardiologist not involved with the trial says the implications of that are profound. He says researchers have yet to encounter another medicine that can benefit the heart in the same way. The maker of Wegovy is the funder behind the trial. The study reinforces that the drug accelerates weight loss and can cause gastrointestinal side effects. The analysis looks at four years of data from more than 14,000 patients. Abortion medications in the state of Louisiana could soon be in the same category as highly regulated drugs. A new bill would classify misoprostol and mifepristone as Schedule IV controlled substances. The proposed legislation would make it a felony punishable up to two, excuse me, punishable up to five years in prison for anyone found in possession of the drugs without a valid prescription. Doctors in Louisiana would still be able to prescribe the drugs and most women would still be able to access the drug. Lawmakers still have until June 3rd to give the legislation final approval before sending it to the governor for his signature. Still to come on Sunrise News to know before you go, severe weather moved through Louisiana Monday leaving thousands without power. Severe weather moved through Louisiana on Monday, leaving thousands without power. In Port Allen, a woman died and two others were injured after a tree fell onto mobile homes during the storms. 
five, a five-year-old child and, a, and a man inside a home were rushed to a hospital. The extent of their injuries is not known at this time. Heavy rain caused flooding in several parts of the state, and there were also reports of downed trees in the area. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Ukraine today. It's his fourth visit to Ukraine's capital city of Kyiv since Russia's invasion. Secretary Blinken will meet with Ukrainian officials to highlight the U.S. support for Ukraine. He will meet with President Vladimir Zelensky to discuss battlefield updates, the impact of new U.S. security and economic assistance, long-term security commitments, and ongoing work to bolster Ukraine's economic recovery. And will emphasize America's commitment to Ukraine's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and democracy in the face of Russia's ongoing aggression, and is set to speak later today. Hazardous chemicals were spilled in Crayola, Alabama on Monday. Mobile County officials say nitric acid spilled from a tinker truck onto the ground. Nitric acid can cause eye and skin irritation and in severe cases, exposure can cause blindness and permanent eye damage. The spill caused Highway 43 to be closed to traffic and Mobile County Emergency Management issued a shelter-in-place order for residents in a two-mile radius. The driver, plus a few on site and one first responder were hospitalized, but their respective current conditions are unknown at this time. The Justice Department announced it will seek tougher sentences for election crimes fueled by artificial intelligence. DOJ officials say using AI to threaten election workers makes the crime more dangerous and more impactful. The new policy applies to the use of AI in any election-related crime, not just violent threats against election workers, but also things like voter suppression. During this election cycle, AI tools have made it easier to mimic politicians' voices and likenesses to spread false information. In New Hampshire, an AI-generated robocall imitating President Joe Biden, urging thousands not to vote in the January primary. Social media apps have taken a lot of blame over the years for spreading misinformation, especially when it comes to politics. So the findings of a new study may surprise you. Researchers at Stanford University and other institutions working with Meta found the majority of the 35,000 participants who stayed off social media for six weeks before the 2020 presidential election did not have a change of heart about who they were going to vote for, no, nor whether they turned out to vote, nor how they perceived the legitimacy of the election. They were also less likely to believe misinformation about the election. The Arizona Supreme Court allowed for a 90-day stay for the recently revived Civil War era abortion law. The Arizona governor signed a repeal of the 1864 abortion ban earlier this month. The measure forbids nearly all abortions except to save the mother's life. Anyone who provides the procedure can be sentenced to two to five years in prison. However, a court order filed Monday says a stay will be in effect through August 12th, meaning the repeal won't go into effect during that time to allow the state's attorney general time to decide on further legal action. And we want to invite you to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV. Just search for Crossroads Today Plus. And we do have time for a check of our forecast with Parker. Parker, is that sunrise a little less cloudy than it has been the last couple of weeks? Yes, we've got a very nice and sunny sunrise. In fact, I'm going to get out of the way. I'm not trying to blind you all this morning. In fact, I'm going to get in the way, so I'm not blinding you with that very bright sunrise. But a, you have a halo, Parker. Yeah, it does. Yeah, we can <laughs> look like at that. a halo around me. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Well, good morning, Crossroads. If you're going to go see that sunrise, it is just a tad bit chilly out there right now. 67 degrees in Port Lavaca, but also plenty humid. With your dew point one degree off that temperature, you have a 98% humidity out there. And this computer says it's bringing you a four mile visibility. So some of us in the Crossroads might see a little bit of fog out there this morning. So please be careful out on the roads today. But like I said, like Carolina was saying, actually the partly cloudy skies that are out there for some of us are going to decrease the sunny skies today. And I'm thinking lows or highs in the low 90s for today. But we do have some more warm weather coming even after the storms we had yesterday, but more possible severe weather coming again on Thursday. And those sunsets are happening a lot later in the day now. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're at like 830 now. That's right. Daylight time. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today, and join Karina, Don, Mac, and Zach today for 25 News Now at 5, 6, and 10.